Hello, and welcome to Lowering Costs, Raising Expectations in Economics Using Alta. Thanks for joining us today. To preserve sound quality, you've entered this conference muted. If you have any questions during the session, please type them in the question box, and we'll answer them during the Q&A segment. This presentation will be recorded, and we'll send you a link to the recording after the session. So I'm John Britch, a marketing nerd at Newton. And during our 45 minute session, we'll cover what Alta Courseware is and how it can be especially useful in entry level economics courses, as well as best practices for using Alta in a course. And to help us answer these questions are uh, Jesse Kurtz Nickel out of Central Oregon Community College, Laura Mann, also a Newton nerd and our digital education specialist, and Eric Stano, our senior director of content. So we are going to jump right in and ask, uh, ask Jesse to talk a little about himself and his school and why he adopted Alta. Hi, Jesse. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, so as, uh, as John stated, uh, I teach at Central Oregon Community College in Bend, Oregon. And, um, you know, I've been there for about four years, and one of the biggest things that sort of jumped out at me uh, when I started teaching there was something that you guys probably uh, all experience a little bit, which is uh, number one, I was I was handed a textbook uh, that had been used in the past and um, was not really what I considered engaging. And the second thing was, as I, you know, I just started to ask students, you know, are you reading the textbook? And they would be honest, as most students are, and they would say, uh, no, uh, you know, we're not reading the textbook. We, we get pretty much everything we need from, you know, your lectures and what you're doing in class. And, and, um, and so that was kind of a big, big red flag for me because I really feel like in addition to what is happening in class, not only do you need that that second level, but you know sometimes if I teach a Wednesday class, I might not see them again for five days, and you know they they sort of come into class and it's like they have not um, even thought about economics between the last time I saw them and the next time I saw them, right? Uh, other than some assignments that that I've given them. So um, so I was really looking. Uh, for a way for my students to engage with economics in a in a meaningful, engaging way between the seat time from when I when I saw them to when I saw them again, um, and so you know Newton really jumped out at me because uh, really what's happening when the students are uh, you know they're they're being asked questions and then the support material. Uh, is is just super engaging. It's got videos, it's got graphing, it's got charts, and that is so much more engaging than uh, than a typical textbook. Um, and so, I sort of said, yeah, no, I want to I want to pilot this. I want to see how it's going. And um, you know, the biggest thing that I, as an instructor, had to um, get my head around was that this was not an online textbook. I think I think the very first time that I uh, presented it to the students, I said, "Oh, we're going to have an online textbook," and it turned out that you know that was very confusing for them because that's not what Newton is. Um, it's really this mastery-based system where the students start with the questions, and if they if they know the material that that is presented to them. Um, they can move through it very quickly and demonstrate what they know, which is what really students want to do. And then if they get stuck, there is this just uh, amazing material in, in really engaging forms, uh, like video, uh, text, which is shortened, you know, so it's going to be different than a textbook, and, um, and then, you know, charts and graphing. So um, that's, that's sort of why I chose Newton, and then and then I'm going to come back uh, later in the webinar and talk to you about how I use it and how it integrates into my specific class and and what you as an instructor of economics can can do with it because it's really really malleable to 
each individual instructor, you know, as opposed to you having to change the way that you teach, it really, it really changes to adapt uh, to what you do. Thank you, Jesse. So at this point, as, as Jesse has, has said, it's not quite a homework system and it's not quite a textbook. So we thought at this point we'd talk a little about, you know, who are we at Newton and what exactly Alta is. And to help us do that is Laura. So Laura, take, the, take it away. Hi, everyone. Laura Mann. I'm one of the digital education specialists here at Newton. I actually came over about a year and a half ago after a 23-year career at Pearson, um, which I can't believe I'm saying that number, 23 years. But um, I came over to Newton because I was excited about what the company is doing in the education space. So if you haven't heard of Newton, Newton is a technology company with a great passion for learning. We are providing educational courseware that's accessible and affordable to all students. And it's really allowing me to get back into conversations with faculty like yourselves about, you know, what are your struggles? What are the current student challenges? How can we help level the playing field um, in your courses so that we can get those students through your classes at a proficiency level. So Jesse touched on this. So that's Newton Corporate, that's who we are. And then the courseware that we provide is a system called Alta. And essentially what Alta is, is a fully integrated adaptive learning courseware system which what that means is students are always starting on the goal topic in their assignments. When they need remediation, where they need instruction, our algorithm is continually assessing your students so that we can provide each student with their own unique pathway through their homework, um, providing them with the content they need. So your better prepared students will be able to move through their assignments quickly, um, your students that are coming in with some knowledge gaps, get that remediation. Um, what's great about the courseware is you're also notified of those knowledge gaps, which gets you involved with those at-risk students or that to those topics that may need some additional review in your classroom. Uh, we're also text agnostic, which means we're going to give you control over the learning objectives that you want to assign. So you can very closely align that material with the syllabus that you have. What's fantastic about all this courseware and what we can do for your students is we do we are able to provide this at a very affordable cost. Um, starting in the fall of 2019, um, each course is $39.95. So students are going to get the adaptive courseware, the instruction, the video content, um, the OER content that we provide, and then we also have a $9.95 monthly subscription rate for those students that want to take advantage of that. We've had a lot of schools like that option for their shorter summer classes. The reason we're able to stay so affordable, and Eric's going to touch on this some more, is that we partner with OER providers, our biggest provider being OpenStax. Um, and at this point, I'm going to let Eric take over from here so he can speak to that content that we include in Newton. Okay, and now we have the uh, entertaining part and only entertaining because I'm going to store my way through grabbing control <laughs> of the actual, uh, <laughs> which is always devastating. And I, I, I work at a tech company and yet I can still never quite master. Uh, oh, did it. We see your we see your screen. All right. Um, so actually, uh, just by way of introduction, um, I, I am the senior director of content, as John said earlier on. And like Laura, uh, I actually spent uh, 20 years, uh, which I also can't believe, um, particularly given my hair, if you can still see it. Um, I spent 20 years at Pearson, and uh, I too joined Newton out of a sense of, of mission. I was an editorial director at Pearson and uh, came to Newton, one, because of the capabilities and the learning outcomes that uh, they were able to demonstrate, but two, I, I, uh, I got tired of uh, telling people that, no, $300 is actually a really excellent thing that we're gonna change up on you 
uh, every three years. Um, so there's a lot that there's a lot to Newton that actually um, conflicts with what I spent 20 years doing, but in the the best possible way. So let me start by talking about uh, we've already explained a little bit about our adaptive mastery based engine. Uh, again, what we're trying to do for uh, any learning objective that you assign to your students, what we try to do is give them the most efficient path towards math, demonstrating mastery of that learning objective. And within any learning objective, there is text-based instruction and video-based instruction. And then there are assessments that we build uniquely to the symbiosis of those two things. And all are driving towards the learning objective. Where the content that I've just described comes from uh, is, is variable. Uh, it comes from universities and colleges, uh, individual subject matter experts, but anyone who's at a university or college, uh, obviously a subject matter expert. Uh, so we ally ourselves with, with people who are interested in our mission um, and are experts in their field. Uh, a lot of our content also comes from um, OpenStax, as Laura just mentioned. So that's where our instructional content comes from. Our videos, again, which uh, pair with our text-based instruction, come from a, a variety of, of places, Marginal Revolution University being one of the most recent ones that we've onboarded, but along with uh, individual subject matter experts who have created videos for us. Uh, and finally, uh, our content team. Having come from a traditional publisher, one of the, the great delights in leading the content team here is that we actually have domain experts on staff. Uh, so we're not always outsourcing to other places. We are actually developing a lot of this content uh, ourselves. Um, and I've already mentioned OpenStax, which you can see on your screen, uh, but Desmos, uh, which you may not recognize as a brand, uh, but I think you'll recognize the kinds of capabilities they can bring to economics specifically. It's a partner startup with us um, that I'm excited to, to be able to tell you about. Um, so let me just get into very quickly uh, a little bit more nuance about how Newton uh, performs. Uh, as you can see, dynamic, personalized, adaptive pathways. Uh, we talk a lot about the prerequisites uh, as well as the cross-domain recommendations that we can make. I'm going to speak a little bit more about this in, in a few minutes. But what we provide is something that is really, uh, in the best way, nonlinear. Um, you assign an objective your students are gonna to labor towards that objective and that will feel linear. Uh, but what we are able to surface is material as they're working through based on the data we collect from them, um, the next best thing for them to do to achieve that objective most efficiently, to really achieve learning of that. So within economics, there is a crosswalk to math uh, on occasion because we can suss out that students are actually stumbling over the math rather than the economics concept that they're, they're working on. Um, we talk at Newton a lot about our prerequisites. Um, I'd actually like to, and, and you may not have heard of Newton, so you may not know that, um, but I'd actually like to broaden the narrative a little bit because we actually really do have, uh, we're not just a homework system, we're, we're a learning system and we have very types of content um, that equals to us uh, several lines of defense that ensure learning. And we are able to actually see the, the data that suggests that. Um, so on the, the left side of your screen, you will see uh, item feedback. We provide fulsome item feedback if you get it right, if you get it wrong. If you get it right, it's reinforced in a really comprehensive fashion. Uh, if you get it wrong, it's explained to you in detail. Um, and that produces most of the gains we see, and I'll show you a little bit of data uh, in a second, um, but if that doesn't quite take and a student continues to struggle uh, on their, their assignment, their learning objective, we proactively will offer them instruction uh, because we can see that they're struggling and you, know, you need to step back and, and, and read a little bit or watch a little bit about this particular concept. Uh, if that doesn't take, that's when we move to offering up prerequisite content. So if you're driving toward uh, you know, an economics concept and it's actually a math concept that's undergirding that that you're tripping over, we will seamlessly offer that to you, the student. Um, so a student doesn't know that they're being taken out of 
uh, the, the uh, assignment that they have. They're just being offered additional help seamlessly. Um, finally, if that doesn't work, um, what we'll offer is what's called a booster assignment. Um, booster assignments in economics are frequently math related. That gives students agency to choose. Uh, we, we tell them we see you're, you're uh, working at this and you're spending a lot of time, maybe try this, uh, and that'll take them uh, into something that's math related. Um, or we will suggest that they actually pause work and uh, visit their instructor. All of uh, Newton's Alta product has been developed with the notion that we are paired with uh, an instructor, be it an instructor who was, is an adjunct, who's hired on a Friday morning and is in the classroom on a Friday afternoon, or an, ex, uh, an expert instructor who's been doing it for 20 some odd years, we always presume uh, the presence of an instructor. We don't try and do your jobs for you. We don't try and be a silver bullet. What we try and do is augment and fuel what it is you're doing. Um, and this is actually just a, a quick graph on the impact of our answer explanations. Um, so, and actually, I'm, I'm going to pause and actually turn to Jesse if he can flip on his audio um, because he's an instructor. He had a, a much more immaculate way of, of characterizing this particular graph. My, my, my way of characterizing it is that line goes up, but uh, Jesse might actually have something uh, more interesting to say about it. Hi, everyone. So, um, so what this is sort of demonstrating, and I, and I actually just interviewed a couple of students uh, this week about their experience with Alta uh, so far in my micro class. And um, basically these are um, questions on one specific learning objective that you have chosen for them. Uh, you know, it could be, you know, shifts in demand or, or shifts in supply, something like that. And basically what this is saying is that you know, after they uh, get a question wrong and they are given sort of really detailed feedback about what it is, uh, why they made a mistake, um, and what the what the correct answer is, then not immediately they don't they don't usually uh, get a question back to back on the exact same concept again because that that is often sort of frustrating for students. But later in the assignment, they will get another question related to that learning objective. And as you can see in the chart, they are more likely to get the second, the third, and the fourth questions um, correct when they see that again. And so you can just, you sort of can see them absorbing the concept in a more meaningful way. And, you know, another way to say that is that they're learning the concept. So um, this just, this graph just fit really well with my um, sort of anecdotal uh, discussions with students and how much they really valued um, that direct feedback um, after they got a question uh, incorrect. So I'll pass it back over to Eric. Uh, that's that, no, that's great, Jesse. And actually, this uh, chart is also emblematic uh, of one of the the great delights of being at Newton is that all of our editorial decisions. Um, are based on data. We have a, an in-house team of data scientists that was new for, for me coming from a traditional publisher. Uh, and the editorial decisions we make are based on that. And we're able to demonstrate uh, the efficacy of those decisions and the learning gains that are, are made by students. And we, we hew to that um, constantly, consistently. Um, and we hear from students uh, and instructors all the time, and, and we act on, on that data while proactively collecting data ourselves. Ooh. Okay, so um, yeah, th these are broadly speaking uh, Newton value propositions and challenges we're trying to, to meet, uh, but want to speak to them in the context of economics. Um, what Challenge one, students don't read the text. Uh, and that, that, again, from 20 years at Pearson, well aware of that. Uh, so we want to offer them the reading material in a way that's actionable and persuasive to them. Um, so rather than read X chapter, offering them the reading material that's going to support them uh, at a just-in-time fashion. Uh, students are obviously coming into every classroom in every domain, every, every uh, department with varied skill levels increasingly. Uh, so um, so we want to uh, support them in economics with some of the fundamental math skills uh, that they may need uh, to, to succeed in economics. 
Um, and students also need help with, with graphing. There, there are, are graphs that they're going to face, as, as you all well know. Um, they're going to face in economics and just like I did with Jesse, um, be able to interpret them uh, in, in a, a real way. And obviously I leaned on him to do that. So I would be one of the people on the, the back end of that arc in your class. Um, so this is a, a video walking you through and just giving you a little socialization as to the experience of Newton. And what I'm gonna do is play the video. Um, you might hear the odd ambient click within it, but I'm gonna try and talk you through it. This will, this will be brief. Uh, but it'll give you a sense of what the, the experience of Alta looks like. And I just moved from, <laughs> John, can you help me by moving me back? Uh, let me see. No, nope, I can do it. Yeah, you got it. There we go. There we are. Um, so this is uh, what your students will see at the start of their experience. They'll see the number of questions. They'll see exactly how long they're likely to take um, at the top of your screen you'll see a progress bar uh, we have a, a wide range of uh, free response questions i mentioned answer explanations and their helpfulness uh, again whether you get it right or wrong uh, you get an answer explanation um, you see that the students have a, a palette there we try and actually also keep um, mindset uh, and grit in mind. So we try and encourage students as they're getting it wrong through some of the material we give them, um, you know, give them a sense of, of optimism. This is, you know, where you're struggling. This is where you're really learning. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, look at how to calculate changes in real GDP. I'll try not to talk over her. Um, but I, some proper data, we can calculate the percent change in real GDP in the same way we'd calculate any other percent and you can see I practice that really well. Um, but uh, again, uh, we have both text-based instruction and video-based instruction. One of the things you saw because the student here was flagging uh, on a number of questions, they were offered video-based instruction proactively. Here's the, the booster assignment that I mentioned earlier in this call. Uh, booster assignments in economics are frequently, uh, he frequently hewing to uh, math that undergirds what the student should be uh, accomplishing in a particular economics learning objective. With booster assignments, uh, a lot of our remediation, if a student hits a just general prerequisite, uh, that that's going to be within the domain they're working. Uh, but when it comes to a booster assignment, Welcome students... to a lesson on order of operations. If we are working with a mathematical expression that contains more than another example of the video. Um, but what I was going to say is with booster assignments, students have agency over choosing them. Um, so a student does not have to have a booster assignment. If they continue to struggle, however, uh, they, they will be given a modal that uh, suggests that they should, they should move on or pause rather and talk to their, their instructor. Now I mentioned, uh, so hopefully, hopefully that's clear and, and we'll be happy to take questions through the chat feature uh, at the end. Um, as I mentioned just now, we have text-based instruction and video-based instruction for every learning objective, and then there are the assessments that are lined up with that. For the video-based instruction, uh, we have just onboarded and developed a partnership with Marginal Revolution University. Um, so I thought I'd spend just a second giving you a taste of that. I suspect you all know um what marginal revolution is all about but just giving you a sense of of my infacility with um powerpoints let's see if i can give that another try <laughs> On average, even professional money managers don't beat the market. Why not? It's not because money managers aren't smart. I know people in the sector, and they're very smart. Rather, it's a reflection of the power of market prices to quickly reflect available information. This leads us to investment rule number two. It's hard to beat the market. First, 
Okay, so I think you, you all probably have a, a sense of what those look like. And uh, as Jesse was telling me yesterday as we were talking through this a bit, uh, most of you know it, but just uh, know that uh, these videos are uh, omnipresent within uh, our course. They're diversified with uh, the actual the, the subject matter expert that you saw in a video earlier who I interrupted or she interrupted me. Uh, but we also have the uh, Marginal Revolution University videos available. And again, for any learning objective, you have both text-based instruction and video-based instruction. Um, lastly, um, I'm not sure if this is lastly, I forget where the end of my slides are, but um, I wanted to, I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, portion that we have uh, a partnership with Desmos, uh, which many mathematicians know. What this provides is a really authentic, immersive experience for your students uh, when there's anything relative to uh, a graph. Um, so let me um, see if I can do this more seamlessly than I did with the video and show you an example of what those look like. There we go. So what uh, Desmos does, this is again asking students to explain how shifts in demand and supply for labor affect labor market at equilibrium. Uh, what this allows a student to do is actually engage with the graph. Um, so they are given a, a full experience. They're not judging, is this graph more accurate than that graph? They're actually engaging with the graph. And as I explained earlier, um, we give full answer explanation. So re regardless of whether they get it right or wrong, they're given an exemplar of what is correct, uh, which reinforces if they, if they themselves got it correct or um, lets them know where they went wrong if they got it incorrect. I'll just give you another quick example. Um, and this has been a really uh, exciting partnership for us. Um, Desmos uh, is a, an interesting uh, startup. It, we're, we're two startups that are aligned. Uh, we, we mentioned accessibility early on. Uh, Desmos is really interesting in their commitment to uh, accessibility. In fact, they have a blind engineer who is leading up their accessibility uh, efforts. Um, and so they, they've been a really interesting, nimble partner who help us, as we uh, said earlier, put achievement within reach of every student, no matter what that student uh, might actually be, be struggling with. And I think, John, is, am I at the end of my, yeah, I am. So John, do you I'm want back. to? I will, I will rest control back from you. <laughs> Thank you. That, uh, uh, so while, while John is getting uh, my final couple of uh, slides set up, I just want to piggyback on a couple of things that, that Eric uh, said. Um, so one thing is, um, I, you know, I, I, I admit that I did not know what Desmos was like. I think a lot of econ teachers don't. But what's really interesting is actually your students will know probably what Desmos is because um, it is very likely that in their math courses, even if it, the math courses are not through Alta, they're using Desmos in some way. Um, when I interviewed those students, they said, oh, you know, I said, do you know what Desmos is? They said, oh yeah, we use it all the time, we love it. And if you get in there, if you get into Alta and start playing around, you can see that it's, it's some of the best graphing software that I've, that I've ever seen. And, um, you know, it's really authentic. And um, it's really going to help uh, your students with graphing. And we all know that, you know, um, that is sometimes some of the hardest parts for our students is the graphing. Um, and, then, and then just to piggyback on um, one other thing, uh, I found interesting from, from some of my students, they said, you know, another great thing that they liked about Alta was you know, you saw in the demonstration from Eric that they're they're sort of typing their answers. You know, they've got a little calculator there and they're typing their answers in. And if they if they forget uh, like a negative sign, or if their answer is really close, but maybe it's not to the correct decimal point or or something like that, um, it doesn't just mark them wrong and say, oh look, you obviously don't understand this. There's something in the algorithm. Eric can probably tell me what it is, but it, it says. 
it says, oh, it sort of prompts them and it says, oh, you may have made like a small mistake. Um, can you just rethink that or, or check check again? And and they, the students really like that because, you know, it was that they made a miscalculation. It wasn't that they didn't understand uh, the concept. And I, can, I, I heard that a couple of times from different students. Um, so now I'm just going to sort of give you a give you a viewpoint into how I personally use Alta and um, before I even get started, I think that the one of the highlights for an instructor is the fact that you don't have to use it the way that I use it. Uh, you are going to, you know, like math and, and some, you know, some sciences, I bet you you could never walk into the same, uh, into a different person's economics class and hear this the same concept being taught the same way. We all do it differently. We all have our little games and our little tricks and and uh, and that's what makes our classes really interesting. And so the nice thing is that you can adapt all to, to be whatever it is that you want it to be. So um, for me, you know, I use it in my micro and my macro classes. Um, what I personally do is I do not use a traditional textbook. Um, I have sort of created like a digital um, textbook where I've taken bits and pieces from from different uh, from different places to sort of just condense the information that I want them to know and then um, Alta is a portion of that you know as I said before what I want to see is I want to see my students engaging with the material at least you know once between when I see them and when I see them again so currently, Alta is is about five percent of my grade. Um, I'm actually, uh, as I've been, you know, as I piloted it um, a couple of years ago, um, as as I've been getting, you know, wonderful feedback about Alta. I'm actually going to increase that to ten percent of the grade um, to just sort of give it a little bit more power, you know, that I that I really want them to sort of take it seriously, et cetera. But um, Alta has the ability to do tests and quizzes, which I don't currently use. I just use their assignments. Um, but it has all of that capability. Um, and, you know, you get to choose what you want your students to be exposed to. Um, and, that, and that all functions through something that they call the learning objectives. So, so you get to go in, um, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, um, actually, John, if you can go to the next slide. Um, this is, uh, oh, well, this is going to be the slide after this. But you actually get to choose, no, sorry, John. <laughs> you can go back. Yeah. Um, you're going to get to choose the learning objectives that you want. And so what what is presented to you is basically, Oh, um, you, can, you get to actually see, oh, under the elasticity uh, learning objective, it's going to be asking them questions about the midpoint formula. Well, guess what? I don't, I don't teach that to my students. Um, you may. Everybody does it differently. Um, I sort of just want my students to understand what elasticity is, how it works with taxes. I show them how to do the, um, the coefficients, but I actually don't expect them to demonstrate that on a test. So when I go into the learning objective, I sort of unclick those questions about calculating elasticity using the midpoint formula because that would, you know, that would freak out my students if they saw that, if they saw questions like that. And that's the type of control that you have as an instructor. Um, you know, to go to go to this slide, I would say that one of the one of the things that I was most astounded by was the the incredible support that I got. Um, my person at, at Newton is, her name is Jenny. And before every term, you know, I get, I get emails from her, you know, Hey, Jesse, uh, do you want to set up your, your classes for the next term? You know, we usually have a 30 minute phone call. We integrate it all with, um, with Blackboard cause we use Blackboard at COCC. Um, but it can integrate into any LMS that you're using, whether it's Canvas or, uh, or Moodle or Blackboard. Um, and it's, and when I say it's integrated, it is fully integrated. 
you know, I know that I have no time. I've got two young kids at home. Um, I know that you guys are stressed for time. And so this is a huge thing, the, the no grading. You, you, set up, uh, you set it up right with your Blackboard grade book. And when they finish an assignment, it just gets populated as it is completed. They get the 10 points or they get however many points that you want it to be. And you have a lot of variability there. Uh, uh, this term, what I did is um, I changed it to be basically, I still wanted my students to be able to complete the work even if they didn't get it done by the specific due date. And so what I have it set at now is if they get it done, completed they get full credit they're showing their mastery of that concept which is excellent I can look down and I can see who's doing it and then if they don't but they complete it at some later point before the course is over they're going to get 80 percent and you can you can adapt that to yourself um, and and that's that's just such a nice thing that you just don't have to think about it you can see that they're engaging with the material and you don't have to think about it um, uh, one other thing that's really nice is Every time uh, an assignment is, the due date is passed, you will get an email in your inbox that says, it says, these were the most challenging uh, parts of your assignment. And, and so it, it reminds you to go in and take a look at your students. So, you know, I get that little buzz in my email and I can go, oh, okay. And I can see which students are struggling, which students aren't. And if I want to, I can pop a little email off and say, Hey, student number one, you know, it looked like you were having a little trouble with this. You know, do you want to come in and talk about it? Do you feel like you've, uh, you've, you've figured out what's happening? They can come back with a question, and it's a really simple way to address, uh, you know, some issues that, that students might be having with certain concepts. And then the last point is sort of the best thing. Uh, as I used it more and more, um, all of a sudden in my evaluations, I started to actually get positive reviews of, about Newton, you know, students saying, hey, I love Newton, you know, I love that when I wasn't in class, if I did the Newton, I felt like I didn't miss anything by the time I came back. You know, that's that's something that I heard. I heard, you know, I love how it, it sort of just kept me, kept me learning the material so that, you know, I was ready for the next class. And, you know, how often do you hear that about a textbook? You know, I've never heard that about a textbook. Oh, I really love this textbook. Um, and then part of that is because, uh, you know, I, I already use marginal revolution in my class. If you guys, if you guys haven't, you should check out their videos. They're inc incredibly uh, high production value. Um, they go all over the world. You know, Tyler Cowan is, is, is an amazing instructor. I think he's at um, uh, John Mason. And, um, you know, those videos are incredible. And then all of a sudden your students get exposed to them in Newton um, and in Alta and you didn't even have to play it for them. You know, I just, I just feel like that, that is an incredibly um, valuable thing right, right there. Uh, John, can you go to the next uh, slide? So here I'm going to show, I've got a couple of slides here to just show you some of the, some of the data that you can get back. Um, this was a class from a couple of summers ago. Uh, it was a microeconomics class. And you can just see you know, that that is the number of students that were delivered, number of questions delivered to students over, um, over an entire course and over a full, uh, you know, full 35 student class. Um, and you can see, you know, obviously the key there is the 97% of struggling students went on to reach master. And what that is telling you is that these were struggling students who were getting significant questions wrong, but they were able to go on and complete the assignment and demonstrate that they understood the material. Next slide. And so here is just, again, showing that they are getting more questions right as they go through an assignment. So you can sort of see the demonstration of learning there that you know, as, as they basically progress through the assignment, they're getting a larger and larger percentage of questions right, meaning that if they did not understand a concept and they were getting one question wrong on the same concept, another question wrong, 
Then all of a sudden, after getting the detailed feedback, after watching the videos, after reading the chunk, chunked text and maybe uh, seeing a, a graphic, all of a sudden they started to get those questions right. Uh, next one. Yeah, and then this is, uh, this is something that is really important to me because I didn't want Alta to be something that if a student really already understood the material, that it was a waste of their time. And so, so what, this, what this was really good, and, and I've got anecdotal evidence to back this up, the conversation that I just had with my students, I asked, I actually had two students. I, I had a student who was um, sort of a high achiever, and then I had a student who actually had accommodations. Uh, very smart student getting an A in the class, but just takes a, just definitely takes a longer time to process things. And so I asked him, I said, well, you know, how, how long did it take you to finish the average Newton assignment? And he said, five minutes. That was the high achiever, right? He goes in, he demonstrates, he's the, he's the green uh, bar right there. He's the advanced student. He goes in, he demonstrates that he understands the concepts, and he's out. You know, that's great. He engaged with the material. Uh, he may have gotten, you know, stuck on one question. He watches a quick video, and he's, and he's out in five minutes. And then you have a student that struggles a little bit longer, and I asked that student, well, how long does it take you? And he said, oh, it takes me about 30 minutes. And I, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't exasperated as if it took too long. It was just that he definitely struggles a little bit more. And you can see that he's going to be exposed to more questions, more opportunities to read the feedback, to go in um, and watch the videos. And he's demonstrating mastery just like the other student, um, just in a, in a different time frame. So what this graph is, if you're looking at it, it's basically that struggling students see more questions and answer more questions than advanced students. Uh, go ahead, next one. So, so before we get to, you know, I would love to hear all of your questions. Um, that's what I'm here to do is sort of take you through somebody who's been doing it. Um, but here would be my, my big advice after sort of crashing and burning a couple times with, with expectations of my students, et cetera. And that's why number one is managing your students' expectations. So I tell them, I, I, you know, when I'm explaining Alta in the beginning of the class, I always say, um, this is not a textbook. This is not a situation where you're reading a bunch of information and then you get presented with questions and you have to you know, answer the questions. They, they are very used to that. So you have to tell them, do not guess. Um, the system will, you know, the algorithm will think that you don't know anything if you just sit there and guess over and over and over again. Um, if you don't know, you know, press the button that says needs help and it will take you to some information, you know, a, a little chunked passage for you to read, a, a video to watch. And then you can demonstrate that, oh, yes, you do understand this concept and you can get through it much faster. So definitely, definitely manage your students' expectations about what Alta is. Because, um, like I said, I mistakenly presented it as an online textbook when I first started years ago. And it was, um, you know, I definitely got a lot of feedback like, that's not, you know, that's not what this is, et cetera. Uh, this, the second piece of advice is definitely go through every assignment. Uh, before you ask your students to do it. I know that sounds logical, but um, you know, you do it once on the front end and you won't ever have uh, questions again. You won't ever have complaints that they're being asked questions that they shouldn't know. Um, and, and that has to do with that learning objectives. You know, you go through, you see the questions and you go, oh, wait a second, I don't, I don't, teach, I don't teach that concept. Um, even though I teach uh, you know, the overall learning objective, they've got little sub learning objectives and I'm going to unclick those so that my students don't see questions about things that they've never been exposed to. Um, and then, and then uh, I always tell my students there's always a feedback button. Uh, Newton and Alta are incredibly uh, fast about um, making changes. They can make changes immediately. Uh, they can fix things immediately, and they can provide feedback back to the students and the instructors immediately. I've I've gone through questions, and I've 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 
you know, hit the feedback button a couple times and said, you know, this question is worded kind of in a way that you could see two sides. Um, you know, you might want to take a look at this question again or something like that. Hey, Jesse, can I jump in real quick? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, I want to just uh, emphasize that, it, again, coming from a traditional publisher, it's a value proposition that I think uh, might be persuasive to faculty who are, you know, always giving feedback and then are told, that's great, we'll see you in three years when there's a new edition yeah. out. We are not only proactively collecting data, and I am in innumerable meetings saying, well, 77% of students flagged on that item, so we develop a hypothesis around it, we validate that, and if it requires changing, we do it. But on a daily basis, because we have a feedback button that is so prominent, students and instructors will avail themselves of it. And I have a team of people who are responding to that feedback in real time. So if there's something that needs to be optimized, uh, if there's something that needs to be corrected happily, the frequency of that is, is marginal. Um, but if there's an opportunity to revise for additional clarity, that happens within 24 to 48 hours. Um, so this is, uh, in, in that sort of uh, context, is, is evergreen. We're, we're constantly uh, optimizing the content and not waiting for three years because we've got a warehouse full of books um, that we got to get, get rid of first. We, we, we can do this on an ongoing basis, and we do. Yeah, and you can tell, and you can tell that that happens because the, the feedback is really immediate and the students recognize that. And once they recognize it, they use it more often. You know, if they know that they're getting heard, they're gonna they're gonna you know use it more often, which is really cool. Um, so I think I think that that's my last slide, John. Are we ready for questions? Uh, yes, we are. So please type your questions in the question bar, and we'll try to get them answered. Um, so one question in uh, you talked about going through the assignments beforehand, Jesse. What kind of a time investment was that for you? Um, it's actually it's actually really quick. Um, you know, once uh, you know, I, I would say that you know, once I had a video chat with um, with my person uh, Jenny, and she showed sort of showed me where it was. Uh, it's it's really quick. I mean, you can see the learning objectives, and you can see all the questions, and um, the questions are tagged by learning objective, so you can just go in and sort of unclick them and know, kind of feel very confident that your students are not gonna be exposed to that. Um, so, you know, I would say that the longest, uh, the longest investment is really just viewing the questions. You know, like, okay, I'm gonna, assign my, I'm gonna assign this to my student, let me just look at what they're being asked. But, you know, we're all econ teachers, so we know, we know really quickly, you know, what is something that they should know. So, you just sort of scan it and it, it's pretty fast. I mean, you, you're looking at it and you say, okay, that looks good. That's, that's on concept. That's on concept. Yep. Yep. I want them to know that. And pretty quickly you can say, okay, that's a learning objective that I want to have. And, and you will very quickly notice something that you don't teach, you know, or, or that you don't think that they, you know, are going to be exposed to and you just quickly go, okay, that's not it. I'm going to unclick that. It's very quick. Super. We are, we are, we want to be respectful of everyone's time and we are over at this point. Uh, so if you have uh, questions that we haven't answered them, we, like I said, we will be sending you an email after the session with a link to a recording and that'll be your opportunity to just hit reply and ask any other questions you have. If you want to uh, get us uh, a, a more in-depth demonstration or a sandbox course, we'd be happy to accommodate you. So keep your eyes open for an email. And uh, thank you, Jesse, and thank you, Laura and Eric, for uh, answering these questions. And thank you to all our attendees. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.